I'm talking about these two things because my teacher is a political prisoner of conscience, out of, out of conscience to it. Because our leaders let us know the ability to discern that which is right from what is wrong. Conscious. The other conscious is being responsible to stimuli. I don't know what's going on. In the Crips, there was organization. But I had to step out because it's crazy because they're saying that they have flags. And they kill each other for flags. But I say to myself, people who have flags have countries. People who have flags have their own food. People who have flags have their own dress. And people who have flags do not expect China to make their flags. So I said, I got to get out of this organization. I'm a money man. I own two bookstores, one food store, I'm about to have a restaurant. I'm a money man. And it makes me feel like the evil. I watch people on YouTube. Dr. Fabian charges too much money. He charges, you see what he did to Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson teaching our children to spin like this. Our children crazy as it is because the drugs they're selling in the community. We don't even spin it, but everyone uplift them and praise them. If we wanted to look in his image and likeness, we wouldn't be ourselves. What has he contributed to the community? Sometimes I talk about the Pope. I'm going to be a little easy because I know where I'm at. <laughs> but I have a question. I have a right to ask questions. And when you suppress people from asking intelligent questions, then you have something to hide. There's no reason for insecurity. And as a child, I always ask myself, when he's going to all these different places, how come he never comes see me? But if he says something about him, oh, no, don't say nothing about him. I'm saying I don't even know him like that. Neither do you. But you have your own children out there killing each other. You don't want to say nothing to them. You're scared of your own children. It go both ways. NBA kids. Every time she kills you know, these guys, go somewhere with NBA kids, the children are neutral. You don't even know where, where, what school are they going to to find children that look like that? NBA kids. NBA don't care about me, so I don't care about them. This brother cure AIDS. And people, he's charging too much. Because black people don't support black people. He over here teaching you what he put in the product. You go to any one of these food stores over there, they will never tell you what they put in the product. And you got the nerve to antagonize them. What did they do for you? He'll tell you what's in the product. How many of you ever shopped in Chinese food stores? Have you ever seen them eat what they sell you? Never trust no one who won't eat what they sell you. Go in there and demand they eat that rice and wings right in front of you. Demand it. I'm telling you today to pay you to eat rice and wings. It's on me. <laughs> we have to stop accepting this craziness. We have to take control of our community. The only thing that's hindering us from doing something great, the only thing hindering us from doing something great is because I believe personally that we're poisoned and we're sick in the head. Because we're taking it drug after drug after drug. You know you submit. I'm putting a restaurant in my community, like I put a bookstore in my community, because I understand what's wrong. Because even if you're trying your best to stay on the path, sometimes the health food stores is way too far. Now you gotta, well, I'm gonna get lettuce and tomatoes and onions, but I'm gonna get the white bread. You're trying to eat a little french fries, you're not trying to go completely AWOL. It's just what's here in the community. Some they grow over you because he's still eating meat mad. Do you know what all they put the french fries in? Constantly on your back while you're trying to make change. But who will say, let's put something in the community then, so we can stop complaining? Harlem makes me sick. I didn't say to say, Africa makes me sick, I ain't going back. Harlem, I ain't going back. They wanted me to teach today to Harlem. I said, I'll never go to Harlem again. Why? We have a new out in bookstore in Harlem. We have a Hebrew Israelite temple. We have a Masonic lodge. We have the house of consciousness where everybody comes in and teach. We have a new Black Panther party over there. Yeah, the market's going 
nation of Islam, after the Masonic Temple, after the Moroccan bookstore, and I'm what? But I have to confess the facts. We all full of it for all of us to be in the same community, two block radius, and still have people walking around strung out on crap. And you want to tell me about some damn Moorish law? You want to tell me about Moorish law when our people over there struggling? What are they doing for our own? You love the law so much, free one of our political prisons. Because everyone would join you, free one of them. My teacher set up a community on both blocks, both sides of the street in Bushwick, for six blocks down, laundry mat, live with the community, movie house, hall of knowledge, bookstore. And here it is, you got 12 different organizations in Harlem, and they can't even control the one block in the community. And one man controlled both blocks, and then did the same thing in Philadelphia, did the same thing in Connecticut, then took us to Georgia and erected pyramids. But it wasn't the pyramids, pyramids that fascinated me. It was not the pyramids that fascinated me. What fascinated me was the organization, the culture. Black people moving on one accord and now arguing with each other. He has to be God, or what they render to be a God. Because I know I've been trying to organize Negroes, and it's hard. Because we let some simple stuff happen, and then we undermine it. He was like, well, no one's going to come. No one's really come to hear you speak. I'm going to hear Dr. Jeffers. I'm coming to hear Dr. Sager. I'm coming to hear Reverend Moses. No one wants to hear you speak. I'm saying, why not? I'm the only one without gray hair. <laughs> How do you not? You complain that you've been stepping up. Then you step up. Then you say, I don't want to hear you. It took 20, 30 years. So we got to have our leaders up here till they're 60, 70 years old. We killing our leaders. At this age, we should be providing safety pension. Not over here complaining. How come he, how come he charging for age? How come he's still going out teaching? We setting him up. Every time this man going to teach, I get worried. I get scared. They already locked him up one time. I don't want to lose him again. These are our fathers and our mothers, and we're putting them out there like that. We should never do that. These are our leaders. Tell them, shut up sometimes and sit down. You step up. Because if all of them stepped up, they wouldn't know who to lock up. Know how to single you out. Too easy. Everyone's sitting down. One man standing up. He said this information for you. No one's stepping up. I challenge you. I say if we got a medical facility in New York, I'd be the first one teaching every day for that. By the time you're five years old, you done had 95 vaccinations. This is insanity. My teacher locked up. They say he had sex. 1,446 times for a whole year, 121 times a month. And he's still in prison for that craziness, 50 plus years old, having more sex ever recorded in American history. <laughs> Mumia Abu Jamal, locked up. For what? The man confessed to the murder that Mumia is locked up for. On a revenue. The man did it. He wrote a written affidavit. He did it on videotape and said I did it. He even took a lie detector test. I ain't never seen no one try to put themselves in jail like the brother doing. <laughs> but you ask yourself, why is Mumia Abu Jamal still incarcerated? Because in 1996, Bill Clinton signed an anti-terrorism and effective death penalty act that says it's a statute of limitations on your freedom. If you can't prove that you're free after you're accused and locked up after 365 days, on a 366 day extended, no matter what happens, no matter who confesses, you still got to be in the death penalty. You still got to be in the death chamber. So I ask, what's up with my black people? Why we ain't freeing these people? You don't deserve that. So what, what are my family telling me in the community? They telling me not to teach. People say, brothers being locked up, but they don't know the law. Did they ever dawn to you that we shouldn't be locked up whether we know law or not? Is it their fault that they didn't know the law? If you got to study law, if you got to study law religiously every day of the week, then something should tell you that we are under attack. They're making 300 to 200,000 laws a year. How can I commit all that to memory? I was 
I want to talk that right. I don't want it in my mind. I'm tired of being physical. I want to go and read and meditate. How many of you want to do it? How many of you on the car? How many of you on the car? What do they got your mind on? Parking rules. 6.30 in the morning, you, you waking up, you running out the house trying to get there before they write your ticket. They got you thinking about your car, man. Wake up. 